hello, good afternoon. Uh-oh, we're having some lighting issues with Facebook. Let's see. I think if I go like that, see if I just tap it off. Maybe it's this window. Maybe we'll fix this. Okay, is that better, Facebook? Try this again. Well, hopefully it'll just fix itself. Maybe if I get really close for a minute. Hello, Facebook. There we go. And then back up. Hmm. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyways, while Facebook is fi fixing itself, let me get the recipe page up here because we're going to get cooking today. This is really bothering me now. Let's see if I go like this. If I zoom in. Oh, that's really close to my face. Hello. Welcome. Really close to my face. There we go. It just needed a little zoomy zoom out. Sometimes Facebook has a mind of its own. Um, let me get this up here and then we will start cooking. And to celebrate today is the day we are announcing the winners of the Bake Off. And oh my goodness, you all have like really upped your game. It is it was so, it was incredibly hard to uh, choose a winner. I had to get my family uh, to help me, and they were like, oh, I don't know, it's a tie. Everybody, it's a tie. It was just all so amazing. And I'm like, well, we have to pick a winner. Okay, so Facebook has gotten rid of the watch party, so let me try to share this. It's a little bit different this time, but we're going to get this more options share to a group the recipe page so if you're part of the recipe page you're probably not going to get a notification that there's a watch party anymore so make sure to hit that little subscribe button or hit the little bell button i think it'll be below so then you will get a notification when we do go live because i don't want you to miss out on a thing and i know you guys all like to join in on the cooking fun all right give me one more second all right here we go we got it up. Hello, everyone. Krista, Janice from Ottawa, Ontario. Mocha. What a cool name. I like your name. Hello. Amy, hello. Yes, shout out from where you're from. Hello on Instagram. Oh, Life on Binge. Woohoo, my daughter and I are here. Yay, welcome. Thank you for joining. And if you missed the amazing, fantastic time yesterday with us girls and life on binge Christy McCammon that was such a fun afternoon we were talking about our inspiration how we got started we had a Q&A you can find that video the replay of it so you won't miss out on that either on my website weightlossrecipescookbook.com in the video tab of the menu otherwise you can find it on Facebook Instagram we were having some echoing issues so we had to cut Instagram but you can find that too oh uh, Valerie hi from Vulcan Panama, so fun. Kimberly, excited about spaghetti squash. Me too. Uh, Lois, hi from New York State. Tammy, hello from Vermont. Oh no, somebody sent me a message. Go away message. Uh, Deb, hello from Florida. Cute apron. Oh, thank you, Deb. Amazon. Uh, Teresa, hello, 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 hello. Krista, sweet Georgia. Welcome all the way from Georgia in rainy, a little bit chilly Minnesota today. So we are going to start with our recipes and stick around for the end because we will be announcing the winners of the Bake Off. So I'm going to move this over here so we have room to cook. Oh, hello from Northumberland, UK. Nicole, welcome all the way from the UK. Welcome to Minnesota. Uh, Cindy, hello, Cindy. Okay. Let's start with our recipes, and we're gonna start with our spaghetti squash recipe because I know a lot of you are waiting for that. And it is called Spaghetti Squash Crack because it's just that good, and it's just so easy. So when your family is gonna have their spaghetti dinner, or their Italian food, or even pizza, whatever they're gonna have, you can have this spaghetti squash and not feel like you're being left out, and you will not even regret not having noodles anymore because who needs noodles? Uh, Gina, hello from South Florida. Welcome from Florida. Uh, Gina, hello from South Florida. I just read that one. Okay, so we're going to start with our spaghetti squash cracks. So for time's 
steak. I already roasted my spaghetti squash, but you can do that really easily. I just preheated my oven to 375. I have a convection oven, but I think it'll work just fine just with the bake setting. And then you're gonna slice your spaghetti squash. There's two different ways to slice it. Let me show you. Let me grab a hot pad so I don't burn myself. So there's two different ways to slice it. It's actually pretty cool, I think. Oh, it's cool enough. You can slice it into discs like this, and then you just kind of pop out the seeds, get rid of those. You could save the seeds and roast them for later. That's really yummy too. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. Or you can slice your spaghetti squash in half the length ways this way. I like to do it both ways. This way is less cutting. This way, it's kind of easier to get all the seeds out. And it does make it really yummy. But either way, then I lightly oiled a pan. I put this face down. Otherwise, if you put it skin side down, you're gonna get all, it's just gonna be too juicy and wet and nasty. And then the rings, you're just gonna lay that on there. And the butts, if you have the butts when you cut them into rings, you'll just lay that skin side up. I roasted that for 35 minutes and it is perfection. Any longer and you get kind of juicy or um, just slimy, squishy spaghetti squash strands. I know that because I did that the hard way where I cooked it too long. There is such thing. Uh, Sherry, hi girl. Hey Sherry, thanks for joining and all you on Instagram. So we have our roasted spaghetti squash here. Now I'm gonna show you, let's make our dish. So I have a beautiful giant dish here. You're gonna need a pretty big dish. And we're gonna do 14 ounces, our full dinner vegetables, or you could do this for lunch, then you do six ounces, unless you do the 10 and 10 split, then do 10 and 10, whatever ounceage of vegetable you're having for that meal. You could even have this for breakfast because you can swap a fat serving for your grain serving in the morning, but that gets complicated. So dinner, breakfast, lunch, you could have this every meal if you want to. So we're gonna do 14 ounces and I'm just gonna take a fork and you're gonna take this disc and you're gonna poke this fork right inside the skin. So you got it kind of sandwiched in there. Then you're just gonna go around the edges. It kind of works. Otherwise, just kind of scrape it out. That didn't work at all, don't do that. I saw it on a video, it didn't work, they lied to me. But you're just gonna scrape out your strands from your skin, you don't wanna eat the skin. I think you actually can eat the skin. I've seen some vegans make that into chips where you just roast it again. Uh, Aunt Patty, hi, cutie, cute apron. Hi, Aunt Patty, and happy birthday. It's my Aunt Patty's birthday today. Happy, happy birthday. Uh, Amy, why is it called spaghetti squash? Because the squash is like spaghetti noodles, or it looks like strands of noodles, which is kind of nice. So we're gonna do 14 ounces, because this is dinner tonight. I thought, I'm, gonna, I'm making this for dinner, why not have all of you involved in my family dinner also? So we're just gonna get 14 ounces. That's three ounces so far. Now, if you don't want just 14 ounces of spaghetti squash, you could do other roasted veggies with it. That would be delicious also. Like maybe some caramelized onions that you roasted in a pan. That's six ounces. We're just gonna keep going. My favorite is when the spaghetti squash gets all that like golden bits that's been like a little bit really roasted. That's my favorite stuff. It's so yummy. And I like to use a fork to get my strands out. Just look at that, it just lifts up perfectly. So we're at 10, we want 14, 12. Now be watchful because this could be hot if you get it right out of the oven. 13.4. Almost there. 0.9. Too much. Not enough. Sometimes that's just 0.1. Perfect. 14 ounces. So we have our 14 ounces of spaghetti squash. I'm just going to kind of move it around a little bit, make it flatter. And you want it pretty hot because you're going to be mixing other things in with it. So we're going to set this to the side. And now we're going to make our delicious sauce that we're going to uh, toss with the spaghetti squash. We are going to do, let's see, 
we're going to do, now you could swap this out if you don't like cream cheese. If you do like cream cheese, you're going to like this. Uh, we're going to do one ounce cream cheese as our full fat, or you could do two ounces whole milk ricotta cheese for your full fat, either or. I like to use the whipped cream cheese or this whole milk ricotta cheese. I just get it at my local Aldi's. Uh, my Walmart farther away from me has the bigger ones of the ricotta, which is nice. So I think I'm not going to do the cream cheese. I'm going to do the ricotta cheese. Either one tastes amazing. So two ounces whole milk ricotta cheese or one ounce cream cheese. You could do whipped cream cheese or the block. And I will be posting this recipe tomorrow morning. Look for that recipe, the spaghetti squash crack. I will have it written down for you for easier cooking. So look for that. So if you miss things, otherwise there's always the replay. You can find that on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com in the video tab of the menu. So we're doing two ounces ricotta cheese. Perfect. Then we're going to do um, two ounces plain Greek yogurt. Again, if you don't like yogurt, you could do more ricotta cheese. So instead of two ounces of plain, plain Greek yogurt, you could do one ounce of ricotta cheese because this is a fourth of our protein and they both count as different things. So two ounces plain Greek yogurt. This is just going to make a delicious creamy mixture. Set this to the side. Then we're going to do our seasonings. This is what's going to make it taste really yummy. Also, we're going to do just a pinch. I saw this and they said, measure it with your heart. So measure this with your heart, kind of just to taste. So we're going to do a pinch of garlic salt, just to give it a little saltiness. Now, garlic salt, you can overdo it. That can be too much. So watch out on the garlic salt. You could add more garlic powder if you want it more garlicky or even just minced garlic. Then we're going to do a pinch of parsley. These are just some of my favorite seasonings. You could do some basil, you could do oregano, and I like parsley, so I'm gonna do quite a big pinch, maybe two pinches, because I really like parsley. You could do paprika, you could even make this a little spicy, put a little hot sauce in there if you want. Uh, then we're going to do, let's see, we have all our sauces. Now we're gonna mix this mixture, so we have our Greek yogurt and our ricotta cheese or cream cheese and our spices. So we're going to mix this and it's going to make this beautiful seasoning, creamy sauce. This is what it looks like. Doesn't that just look delicious? So now we're going to take our spaghetti squash again and we're going to pour this mixture on top. Let me get my spatula here. We're going to scoop this mixture on top of our spaghetti squash. And we're not done yet. I get every bit because we measured this. Uh, Amy, what kind of fruit or veggies can we eat on the side? So this will be your full vegetable and your full dinner. So you wouldn't get anything on the side unless you want like two ounces free pickles. Or sometimes I'll count uh, pickled jalapenos if you want a little spice to your life. I count those as pickles because you can't have more than two ounces of that. Well, you probably could, but I can't. That stuff is spicy. Usually an ounce of that, I'm like, whew, cleans out the sinuses, gets everything moving. I heard hot stuff is really good for you though. So, so we have our cream mixture there. Now we're gonna do some turkey pepperoni. Uh, you could do regular pepperoni, just make sure that there's no sugar in the top three ingredients. And I kind of like turkey pepperoni. I try to stay away from ham and pork as much as I can because it's not the healthiest food. So for some reason, turkeys are healthier than pigs. We are going to do one ounce of pepperonis and that'll be a fourth of our protein. You could dice these smaller if you want, but I'm just going to leave them whole. I'm going to do one ounce, just kind of throw them on top. We're at 0 0.7, 8, a little bit more. Perfect. One ounce. You get quite a bit of pepperonis for an ounce. And I know they have like little mini pepperonis. Those are cute too. Otherwise, you could dice these smaller. Then we're going.
going to do spaghetti sauce, which I forgot to grab. Let me grab that. Um, Mocha, is there a substitute for pepperoni? Sure, you could do chicken. You could do an ounce of chicken. You could do um, turkey bacon. That would be delicious too. I like turkey bacon actually better than real bacon. It's less rubbery and less like fatty, icky. Uh, you could skip the pepperonis completely. You could do like chickpeas if you're more plant-based or vegetarian because I guess there's dairy in the yogurt. So this would not be plant-based. We're going to do two ounces spaghetti sauce. I'm going to give this a little stir. It has been sitting in my fridge for a day or two. Uh, I get the Bertoli Organic. It's olive oil, basil, and garlic. I really like this flavor. To me, it's delicious. So we're going to do two ounces of this. And this is a free condiment to a meal. So we got one ounce, one and a half, two ounces, perfect. A uh, patty, pepperoni, yummy. I have to try this. It's really good. This is a family favorite. We have this not too often, but usually we're like, oh, we got to make spaghetti squash crack again. Put that in the menu for the week. Uh, Janet, can you use salsa instead of spaghetti sauce? You sure could. Then you could do like taco meat and make this like a taco spaghetti squash crack. Then you could even change the seasonings to uh, homemade taco seasoning. You can find a homemade taco seasoning in my volume one cookbook. And I think in some of the later volumes, because we use it again, so I put that recipe in there again. Or cooking with joy. So if you want to make your own taco seasoning, super healthy, super easy, spice blend. Now we're going to do our cheeses because we've got to have some cheese and we have a whole heck of protein left. So it's supposed to be mozzarella cheese, but I don't have any mozzarella cheese in my house, but that's okay. We're going to do a mixture of cheddar cheese works also, and then we're going to do Parmesan cheese. So about half and half, and we're going to do one ounce total or just sprinkle on your cheese till it comes to one ounce. So we're going to do Parmesan cheese. I'm going to try to do it half and half. If there's a little bit more of this, then I'll do a little bit less of that, just so it totals one ounce. Or you could do your favorite cheese. You could do brie cheese, blue cheese, no cheese, and do a different half of protein if you want. But mozzarella cheese is delicious on this also. One ounce, perfect. And there we go. Now you can toss this together and kind of coat all your, sp all your spaghetti squash. Or you could heat this up again so everything gets nice and melty. But watch out, don't heat it up too much because the Greek yogurt can and could curdle. That makes sense. Yeah, I said that right. It can curdle, so kind of watch that. Don't microwave it too much. But you can microwave Greek yogurt. It's okay. And this is our spaghetti squash crack. Then you would get your fork in here and you would dig in, get all the yumminess. Get a pepperoni in there. You got your sauce. You could put your sauce underneath the pepperonis. You could mix your sauce in with your cream mixture if you wanted to. And you have this beautiful pasta, no carbs, delicious. You get to eat this and lose weight. Win-win. You can even like swirl it around on your fork like you do with regular pasta. Yum. You can even do some chickpea pasta on this if you don't want the pepperonis or cheese. That would be delicious also. So many ways you could do this. Spaghetti squash is so versatile. You could do it like a thousand and one things with it. Um, Christy, I have a spaghetti squash waiting to be used. I know what I'm making. Yes, and your family would love this too. The kids won't even know it's not noodles. They probably will, but they won't. It's so yummy, they won't even care. We're going to set this to the side because how easy was that? And then what I like to do is I like to cook one meal and have that for two days because usually dinners we all eat dinner together and there's five of us adults in the house we're kind of like roommates it's really fun so i like to cook one big meal and split that for two days so i have more spaghetti squash roasted and then if we kind of run out of that we can just roast some more vegetables to put on top and then we'll have this for two days and then the next meal we'll have that for two days and then the next meal two days or so on depending on what we're making sometimes it turns out all oh, this meal is just for one day and it's kind of fun. That's what I like to do for dinner. So I'll make a menu. I usually make it either Sunday night or Monday. And then I'll make it for the week. Then I know what to buy for the week. Because you don't want to just have all this stuff in your house and then it goes rotten. 
My favorite is frozen vegetables because those can't rot on you. They just sit in the freezer waiting for you to eat them. Nicole, hey Natalie, I just got on. Looks yummy. I love spaghetti squash. Me too. It is so delish. And who needs pasta when you can have that? So now let's move on to our blueberry lava mug cake from volume 10 or they're both the brand new brand new volume 10 or cooking with joy 2 over 320 recipes in one big book yes uh teresa i'm thinking meatballs on there oh teresa yes that would be good or some ground beef if you like spaghetti with a meat sauce that would be delicious too you could mix that in with your spaghetti sauce and then pour that on top. Yum. What a fun idea. Yeah, there's a thousand and one ways to make this. Instead of the yogurt, you could do ricotta cheese. Instead of the ricotta cheese, you could do cream cheese for your fat. You could even, I've even done avocado as my fat, mashed that up in there. That was delicious. It was like a creamy avocado mixture. I've made it taco. I've made it buffalo. I've done buffalo or uh, hot sauce and blue cheese. And it's kind of like a blue buffalo. That was really yummy too. So again, thousand and one ways to do it. And they're all delicious because you can't go wrong with spaghetti squash. So now we're going to make a mug cake or a muggy, whatever you want to call it. If you don't want to say cake, call it a muggy. This one is a really fun recipe. It's actually on the cover of volume 10 because it was just so beautiful and it's so easy and so yummy. We're going to make this and we're going to make it in about like five minutes. That's how long this takes. So it's super easy in the morning to just whip it together, pop it in the microwave, make your coffee, get your mug cake, get your coffee, go back to bed, get your Bible out, spend your time in the morning. That's what I like to do. So uh, one lady, she made the cinnamon apple bake for the bake off. She made that as a mug cake. She posted that on Instagram, I think really late last night or early this morning. And I'm like, oh. That looked amazing and how easy to just pop it in the microwave for a couple minutes. Now the timing on this is different for every microwave because every microwave is so different. So if you take your cake out, your muggy, and you poke it in the middle and it's still like really soft and just goopy, put it in there for another minute. If you cannot get the thing to cook, take it out of your mug, flip it over onto a plate and then cook it for a minute and that'll really get the bottom nice and done. Depending on your microwave because every microwave is so different. So we're going to start with a large mug. I have found the more flatter, wider the mug is, the more done your mug cake is going to be. Otherwise, if you get like the really tall, skinny mugs, those sometimes the bottom won't and the center won't get as cooked. Or you could do two small microwave safe ramkins. Those work also. You could even bake this. I would do it 350 for about 20, 30 minutes, depending on your oven. So we're going to start with a large mug. Put this on our scale, zero our scale. We're gonna do three ounces banana. And you kinda want your banana a little bit ripe. The riper your banana, the sweeter your mug cake is going to be. I found out the hard way, don't do green bananas. That is like, oh, that doesn't taste sweet at all. And you want a little bit of sweetness. We're gonna do three ounces banana. And this is nice because you're not gonna dirty another bowl. You're just doing everything in one mug, super easy. We're going to mash our mug cake. We're going to mash our mug cake in our mug. You don't even have to oil this because the microwave, there's, it does magical things where your mug cake won't really stick to your mug. Now, if you're doing a like chickpea, the, I think it was the cherry chickpea mug cake, that one probably will stick. You would want to oil that one. But if you're making just a regular mug cake, you don't really need to oil it. You can if you want to depending on your microwave and your mug. All right, so we have it nice and mashed, nice and squished. Then we're going to add one egg. I had it. And you've probably all heard me say this before, but I get my eggs from a farm, so I always weigh my eggs. One egg should be two ounces. So let's play the game. Let's try this one. And if it's like one, 2.1, that's okay it should weigh at least two ounces. Otherwise, you're going to be low on protein and you're going to be hungry later in the day. Perfect two ounces exactly. That was satisfying. Then we're going to do one ounce of uncooked oats. Or I'm going to experiment and I bought some.
course, wheat bran or wheat germ would work also. Quinoa flakes, those work perfect too. I've been wanting to try this, and I'm like, today's the day. We're going to do it. We're going to experiment together, and it's going to turn out, right? It'll turn out. You never know what's going to happen live. We're going to experiment to Oh, if I can get the bag open. I can do it. Don't spill everywhere. Do they make these childproof? You know, they make those tabs to tear it off, and then it never works. Okay, we got it. Oh, I think I'm sweating now. Who needs the gym? You just get a bag or a jar and try to open them. Mocha, can we use wheat germ? You absolutely could. So wheat germ and wheat bran are almost the same thing. They're just different parts of the wheat grain. The wheat germ, I think, is the inside, and the wheat bran is the outside. So they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, what is the grain again? This is coarse wheat bran. Don't get the fine wheat bran. That has flour in it. I looked that up when I was going to buy this. This is the coarse wheat bran, unprocessed, organic, non-GMO. I got it off at Amazon. I got two big bags of it. So we're going to try it today. Otherwise, if you are gluten-free, you could do quinoa flakes. Those are perfect. You could even do like four ounces cooked rice or cooked quinoa. Uh, Deb, that happens to me daily. Hate those tabs. Oh, they never make them perfect. It always, like, goes up, or you'll do it, and it'll rip the whole uh, resealable thing, and then you're like, well, can't reseal this. But makes life an adventure, right? Cooking is an adventure. So we're going to do one ounce, or just do regular oats. That works perfectly also. I just really wanted to try this. So I'm like, well, let's. Let's make live stream an adventure and a little dangerous, and let's try it on live. See what we get. Christy, thanks. You're welcome. It's always fun to kind of try new things. I really liked the wheat germ. I've tried it like once or twice, and I really like that. I bought some Scottish oats. I've really liked that so far. It's just kind of fun to mix it up, try new things. They totally give completely different textures. You could even do half and half. Do like half of this, half oats, half of this half wheat germ, half quinoa flakes, mix it up, whatever you want to try. Or you could do like cooked, some cooked steel cutouts that will be a little bit wetter, so you might have to cook that a little bit longer. All right, so we did our eggs, our oats, so now we're going to do a pinch of salt. And I just have some pink Himalayan sea salt. So we're just going to do a pinch or about an eighth teaspoon is about a pinch. I think someone did look that up. I think air fryer Kathy from Texas I think she looked that up, that a pinch is about an eighth teaspoon. Then we're going to do a fourth teaspoon of baking powder. There, I did. And then I'm going to do a fourth teaspoon of baking soda. That's not in the recipe. But I learned later that if you put these two things together, they make the perfect mixture of getting it a little brown and a little fluffy. So the baking powder makes things poof and get fluffy. And the baking soda makes things brown. I don't know what they do, but they're magical ingredients. They do those things. Oh, we didn't do the elf. There we go. And together, they're the perfect combination. So when in doubt, I do like a fourth teaspoon of each, and it's perfect for one serving. Then we're going to do a splash of vanilla extract, or a fourth teaspoon, half teaspoon, whatever you how much you like vanilla extract or skip it because I know to some vanilla extract can be triggering it can make you want to eat the whole house then skip the vanilla extract it'll still taste delicious a uh, sweetie can we use millet it's a reddish looking grain that remind that resembles mustard seeds but it's it's a grain <gasps> that's a great question I've never tried millet but definitely try it I'm very adventurous and that sounds really fun I'm not sure if it's more like steel cut oats where it will be like thicker that it takes a longer time to cook you might want to cook it first or like wheat berries I bought some of those too because they're kind of fun those kind of remind me of rice so those you would want to cook before you add them to your mixture otherwise it would be like putting raw rice in here 
and it's going to be really crunchy. You might hurt your teeth on those things. So I've never tried millet, but it sounds really fun. But you could definitely try it. If it's like steel cutouts, I would cook them first and then add them to your mixture. Like make a batch in your crock pot or just make a batch of it and then just stick it in your fridge and use it as you go. That's what I did with the wheat berries. It was very fun. Uh, Melissa, you're really good at this. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Either I'm really good or I'm just really adventurous and I experiment with things. I've had, I've had, I've had my share of things not work, dropping things or things don't turn out. It's an adventure and it's really fun. Why not have fun in the kitchen? If we're gonna be here three times a day, every day at least, give or take a few cooking sessions, if we're gonna be here in the kitchen cooking, it might as well be fun and an adventure and we get to eat it, that's the cherry on top. So fun. Okay, so we did all of this. We have our three ounces banana, our one ounce egg, our one ounce uncooked grain, it could be oats, oat grain, whatever kind of grain you want to do, or four ounces cooked, you might have to cook it a little longer if it's a little bit wet mixture, like rice and cooked quinoa, you wouldn't have to cook that longer, but like uh, cooked steel cut oats, you would. Then we have our fourth teaspoon of baking powder, baking soda, a splash of vanilla, a teaspoon of sea salt. Oh, we have another question. I learned that baking powder is activated by heat and baking soda is activated by liquid. So putting them in there together should turn out great. Oh, that is good to know. Thank you. The more you know, we will have to have a segment of that every day. Be like, we're going to find out something new. I really like that. That is cool to know. I didn't know what they did, but I knew they did things. My dad's a scientist and I haven't asked him about that. But that is really cool to know. Then we're gonna do three ounces frozen blueberries. Now this is where you can mix it up and make it your own. You could do raspberries, you could do cherries, you could do frozen mango. Um, strawberries, now those are a little bit really wet, so I don't know if that would make this super soggy, but try it, you never know. So I like, my favorite is blueberries, and the original recipe is blueberries, so we're gonna stick with that. We're gonna try one new thing at a time for recipe. So we're going to do three ounces and we're going to kind of put them in the middle of our mug cake. I'll show you what our mug cake looks like. Isn't that beautiful? It's with our wheat bran. It's nice and thick. So we're going to pu push this like in the middle. So our whole middle is just filled with blueberries. So zero your scale. We're going to do three ounces. <laughs> we're going to get in the mug. Three ounces. And then we're going to press it into the middle. So nine, three, perfect. This is where you get a little messy. So just squish the blueberries into the middle, take the ones on the side, push them in the middle. You want everything in the center so it's a lava cake. That means that when you open it up, all the juicy blueberries come out. I've never used fresh blueberries, but I've only used frozen blueberries. But again, be adventurous, try it, you never know. If it turns out bad, try it a different time the next breakfast. We get three meals a day to try things. Try it the next day. All right, we have our three ounces of blueberries. So here's our mixture. We have our blueberries in the center, our cake on the outside. Let's pop this in the microwave. Experiment time. I'm going to cook this for my microwave. I do three minutes and 30 seconds. Depending on your microwave, you might do it four minutes. You might do it two and a half minutes. I've seen a lot of recipes that say one minute. My microwave has never done it in one minute. So we're going to do three minutes, 30 seconds. So while that's cooking, my computer just turned off. That's not good. I can't see your comments now. And again, you could do it in two little ramkins. You could do it in a small microwave safe baking dish. They make microwave safe muffin tins. You could do it like that and then just press your blueberries in the middle of each one of those. Now we're done with this. So this has all of our fruit. It has most of our protein. Right now we have a half of our protein in it. So we're not done with our protein yet. We're gonna get our Greek yogurt again. This is my favorite thing to top anything and everything with almost because it's just creamy. It's cold on the hot. It's just really yummy. 
Uh, Noreen, if you wanted to add nuts, would you add them now? Oh, that's a great question. There's different, adding nuts into the bake tastes differently than adding them on top. You could do both uh, because if you skip the Greek yogurt, you get a whole half of protein. So you could put half ounce of nuts in it and then half ounce on top. Or you could do like a total of a half ounce and put half and half in it. Then you would still get Greek yogurt on top because you get a fourth of a protein after your Greek yogurt. So this is going to be a beautiful breakfast. So in the batter, the nuts will probably be just a tish bit softer, but still delicious. And then on top, they would be like a crunchy topping. Depending, so if you had like roasted almonds, you could coarsely chop those. And then you'd have like almond crunchy bits on top. Walnuts would be delicious inside. You could even toast your almonds. Almonds. I was trying to say walnuts, but it's said almonds. You could toast your walnuts or pecans in a skillet on the stove, just dry. You just have a skillet, like medium, high-ish heat, depending. And then you put your nuts in there and just kind of stir them till they're nice and toasted. Oh, it brings them to a new level. I'm going to grab a plate because we're going to put our mug cake on a plate. Do I want this plate? It's all about the beautiful plate. Let's do... This will be a perfect, beautiful plate because it will complement the blueberries. All right, we're almost done. It's got 50 seconds left. Noreen, was that uh, all, all nuts? <laughs> yeah, we got some all nuts. You could do some walnuts and almonds together. And you got some all nuts. Put that on top. It's delicious. That would be very fun. Or you could do like mixed nuts. That would be delicious too. <gasps> Pistachios, those are really good. You can get those. I'll show you. You know, they have them in the shell, and then you have to shell every single one of the pistachios. You can get them already shelled. No shells. It saves a lot of time because you're going to weigh it. You don't want to weigh all the shells. Or you have it on there, you eat your pistachios, you bring it back, and then you say, oh, well, this is how much the shells were compared to. Nobody wants to do that. So you can get them already shelled. This is really fun. I think my sister really likes pistachios. She got these at Walmart of all places. I know you can get like smaller packages at um, gas stations, but those are really fun. <gasps> it's done. All right. Is it really done? Now don't burn yourself. It could be quite warm. Let's see. I don't want to burn myself, especially on live. If I was home alone, it's a different game. <gasps> Here's our beautiful mug cake. Look at how much it poofed. So make sure you have a large mug. It's not like a salad where your salad lies and you always have to have a bigger plate than your salad. Not that much, but you could do like the poke test. I like to poke test. If it's firm, a little bit spongy, then I know, oh, it's perfectly done. <gasps> I think I'm going to like this wheat bran. This is exciting. Uh, Noreen got those. Love and chili lime too. <gasps> Ooh, I never thought of the flavored ones. So this fork has an egg on it. We don't want that. So now to get your mug, you could eat it in your mug, just put your yogurt on top. That's super easy. Or to get it like the picture where you get your mug cake out, you could take a knife or the back of your fork and you're just going to slide it around the edges. It should come off really easy because again, the microwave does miraculous things. Then you're going to take your plate, put it on top, flip it over, give it a little tap. Like patting the baby. And then watch out. Let me get this on properly. We don't want to burn ourselves. Ah, perfection. And you can tell because the bottom is done. If the bottom is like a creamy, gooey white, pop it back in the microwave for like 30 seconds to a minute, and that'll cook that just perfectly. Because you don't really want to eat raw egg on the bottom. That's not fun. It's kind of slimy. We want yummy. Here is our beautiful mug cake. Then, before we dig in, we're going to top it with two ounces Greek yogurt. And I'm going to have this tomorrow, and it'll still be delicious. So, my favorite thing to get beautiful Greek yogurt or is I like to use a cookie scoop. I have a really small one, so if I have, like, oh, I'm going to do muffins and there's multiple, then I'll use the small one. Otherwise, this is about two scoops, is about two ounces. I always measure it. 
but it kind of gives you a good idea of, oh, two scoops. And it's just so pretty. Oh, perfect, one ounce. And a little bit of a heaping scoop. I don't know, to me it just makes it pretty. Oh, 0.8. All right, so just a little more dollop. Depending on your yogurt. I have found the whole milk Greek yogurt weighs more. Then you just rinse this off and you're good. I thought that was thunder. I think it, we live by train tracks a little bit. Then, to make it just gorgeous and taste good too, we're going to add a pinch of cinnamon on top. Just a little pinch. Beautiful. You could even like save an ounce of blueberries if you want to and sprinkle those on top. All right. Now, here is the test. We're going to cut into this. Isn't that just beautiful? That is a cake stack. Yum. All right, let's cut into it. And let's see what the wheat brand is. So exciting. Oh, we haven't come. Do you prefer full fat yogurt? Yes. Yes, I do. It's creamier. It, um, it has, it's less processed. So the difference, I know we're all waiting to cut into this. The difference between whole milk or um, Greek yogurt and yogurt is Greek yogurt is just strained longer, and then whole milk Greek yogurt is just made with whole milk, which I like to stay with whole milk. I like to try to eat the least processed that I can, and when you're eating that protein with the full whole milk of it, it's actually healthier. Your body absorbs it better, so I actually prefer whole milk things, and I've lost weight eating it the whole time. So I'm out of the whole milk stuff, so I have just the regular Greek yogurt. It's sad. It's not as creamy, not as thick, but it does work. Uh, Heather, two ounces Greek yogurt is only a fourth protein, correct? Absolutely correct. So we have half a protein inside, a fourth of a protein on top, then you're going to side with one fourth protein for a complete breakfast. And what's cool is my cookbook, if this, like this meal does not include your full meal, so I put at the bottom of every recipe what you would side it with. I have it in italicized, so then you know, oh, I get a fourth of protein. You could do half ounce of nuts on the side. You could do two more ounces of Greek yogurt if you want. The possibilities are endless. You could do an ounce of meat if you like meat. Heather, got it. All right, so let's dig in. So we have one cut. Let's get close. Uh, I get my Cookie with Joy books yesterday and love them. You are too cute. Ah, I'm so excited you got them. Yay, you get to dig in and start cooking. So excited. And thank you for your order. Thank you for your support. Are we ready to cut into this? Here we go. I'm really excited. Let's see how the wheat bran turned out. Oh, yes. Beautiful. And then you get the beautiful yogurt dripping inside. It is perfection that was an experiment worth experimenting with you it was worth it oh this is gonna be so good for breakfast I'm gonna leave this in the fridge overnight and it'll be perfect I actually like it in the fridge overnight because it hardens a little bit more and then the Greek yogurt kind of soaks into the cake or the muggy and it's just perfection so good uh, you're welcome I bought a second for my cousin so we can do it together Oh my goodness, how fun and what a great idea. Then you can both cook together. Oh, so fun, what a fabulous idea. My mom made the mango bake recipe uh, last night for me and my brother. It was so nice of her. And then we like to put the Greek yogurt on top at night and then in the morning it's soaked in. It's just so moist with the mango, so delicious. So here we have our blueberry lava cake and then our spaghetti squash crack. So you got dinner and breakfast done. And how quick and easy was that? Without all the chatting, I mean, you could make this within 10 minutes, both of them. You got breakfast and dinner. I know some people are like, oh, how do you have time to cook all day? It's easy. Once you get these easy, simple recipes, and you get your brain mixed around and wrapped around all this, it's so easy just to throw together and you have delicious meals. Yum. All right, we have a couple comments. Let's see them. Krista, I love that part of your cookbook, how you help us make it a complete meal. Me too. I wish I would have had something like that when I started, because otherwise I'm like doing so much math in my head. So then when I started putting these recipes together, I'm like, 
this is so easy to just have it all written down then you just know exactly what to eat perfect done no thinking just easy that is my goal in life is to have simply delicious or deliciously easy meals cindy looks great oh thank you cindy now the time we've all been waiting for we have to clean this up because this is serious business move everything because it is time to announce the winners of the Bake Off. I need to wipe off this because I have baking soda everywhere. Because we're going to put things on this table. We're going to announce the winners of the Bake Off. So exciting. So many entries. So incredibly hard to pick the winners. They were just everything. I looked at everything and I think I drooled on my phone about a hundred times, but we have the winners. It was so hard to pick. Everyone did such a fabulous job. Oh, the thought you've all put into this. And again, this, this time there was no ugliest. So we did a special place instead of that because everybody's bake looks so good. Nobody's turned out a disaster, which I always wanted to have the ugliest in there because sometimes baking is an adventure and sometimes it doesn't turn out the way we think, but that's okay. I'm going to bring my computer over so we can really be close and personal while we announce the winners. So our first winner for the most beautiful food put together, let's see, I'm going to get the picture up because you have to see the picture of it. I have it. Let me get it up while we're getting this because a picture is worth a thousand words. And did I mention, I will be posting all the pictures of all the entries today because they were so perfect and so beautiful that everybody has to see these. And some of you sent me them in secret because you're like, oh, I don't want people to know that I did this special thing to my baker. I did this and this, which was very clever. You guys are so cool. Oh no, this is the wrong thing. Okay, well, uh, Debbie Feathers, I just received my volume 10 and love it. Yay, I'm so glad. All right, I clicked the wrong one. Anyways, we'll, we'll, you'll be able to see all the bake-offs. Uh, let's see, I have it posting at 345. The bake, all the entries will be posted and the winners again. And I have a little write-up of all the winners. So, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm so ready. For the most beautiful food, the winner of this goes to, drum roll please, Christy McCammon. My goodness, she made hers in, um, I think it's actually a taco shell dish, which is amazing. And it looks like a beautiful flower. And then she did piping with the peanut butter on top and the piping is just gorgeous. And then she topped it with raspberries and walnuts. It is a beautiful food. So Christy, you have won the prize for the most beautiful food. I'll show you the prizes after we announce the winners. For the most creative, that means the most creative twists in the recipe. So like, oh, I switched out this for this and I did this instead of this or this, this, this. With six creative twists in one recipe, the winner of the most creative goes to, drum roll please, Heather Aldridge Ibrahim. It, 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 mm -hmm. Yep, I have it. I have it written out on the post coming at 345. Congratulations, Heather. You won the most creative and oh, oh, it was so hard. They were all so beautiful. Hers was on this beautiful turquoise plate and then she did, oh, just so many creative twists. She did half and half of wheat German oats and then she drew, she wrote on the side of her plate in peanut butter which is crazy amazing. She wrote, he is risen. It was for Easter. It was gorgeous. Everybody say congratulations. We're not done yet. I have more prizes. Oh, I got to check Instagram. See, I have a comment. Uh, she just made a lava cake. Yay. Oh, yum. What a fun one. Lava cakes are very fun. And now for the most beautiful background or presentation or like plating it and then putting things with the plating and then just the picture taking just like it should be in a magazine. It was so beautiful. This was really hard to pick too because there were just so many, oh, there were just so many beautiful ones. The winner of the most beautiful presentation goes to Jessica Stenfeld's, I'm sorry if I'm totally saying your name wrong, Jessica Stenfeld's Schmelz. 
that is a fun name. But hers, she like did hers in a square bake and then she uh, did her apples on like a mandolin and they were just so geometrically put together on her apple bake. And then she had this beautiful placemat that had these geometric shapes and just all the colors put together. They just complemented each other so well. And then she had the white, beautiful uh, napkin and her fork and oh, it was just a beautiful plating put on there. So that was the most beautiful presentation. Then, so we didn't have ugliest this time because everybody's was so beautiful. So instead, we had the most personable. And this was, I think, the hardest because there were two that were so close together. There was, so the honorable mention was Cindy Anderson. She had hers and she did a beautiful cinnamon heart. And then she had her beautiful little kitty there too. And then the winner of the most personable goes to Tammy Smith. Her cinnamon bake, her cinnamon apple bake she had in a beautiful pan. And then she had a cat in a basket sitting next to it. And then next to that, she had this really cute bunny with a tutu. But seriously, the cat in the basket, that was just so cute. I think the last bake-off, the most personal, was somebody's husband, and he was holding it like that. It was just so gorgeous. So congratulations to all of you. And then, oh, Tammy, you're watching. Your kitty is adorable. And then the little basket, your little bunny, it was so cute, so personable. So thank you, everybody. And now, for the grand prize winner, we have, drum roll, please. The grand prize, it was a beautiful plating. It was very creative. It was just beautiful food. Also, just everything off the top, off the wall, just gorgeousness. Uh, Nicole, I didn't see the cat in the basket one. Cute. Yes, I'll be posting all the pictures. The winners will be in the first post, and they'll be all together, and then I'll have the next post. And there'll be some that were just, like, really close to the winners, and then I'll have the next post. Because there were, like... 21 or 22 entries this time, which was amazing. So you can see all of those. So the grand prize winner goes to Miss Linda Steele. You won the grand prize. She had, oh, she had this beautiful cinnamon apple bake. And then in the middle, she took her apple and made it into an apple rose. Then she had another picture where she had tin foil inside her springform pan so they wouldn't leak, which is genius. I have to remember that because mine leak. I don't know how to do that, but that was genius. Then she did all these twists and stuff on the side. Then she made a berry compote or like a jam on the side and she had that. And then she had um, her yogurt on the side with some berry on top. And then she had a beautiful plating with a beautiful candle and just lace. And it was just absolutely gorgeous. Again, it was incredibly hard to pick anybody as just the winners. It was absolutely beautiful, all of you. Well done, everyone. Congratulations. Now, for all of you who did enter, I don't want you to miss out on a thing. So everybody who did the hard work of making your bake, making it beautiful, putting it together, sending it, tagging me in it, posting it, all that stuff, for all of you who entered, message me, and I'm going to send you a code for 20% off my whole Facebook store. It only works through Facebook. I don't know how to do it through PayPal. But all who entered, send me a message. I have your names already, so I know who you are. And you can have 20% off your order of anything on my Facebook store. You could put a huge old order together and get 20% off if you want. You could pick just one. There's no expiration date on this coupon, so message me for your coupon code. And then for the winners, let me show you what you won. I have a big old box here. You actually get to pick your prize. So the grand prize winner goes to Linda. She gets this beautiful bag. I have one myself. And it is just so cute and so festive. Then you get this beautiful travel mug that says choose joy because we're cooking with joy. Sherry, talented ladies. Yes, everyone is so talented. Then I have this beautiful spring oven mitt that says here comes spring. It's all the spring mood. And then I have this for the grand prize winner also. It's these stacking bowls that have beautiful flowers on it and with two covers so they can be like travel bowls. And there's about, let's see, four, four different sizes in here. So congratulations, Linda. I will be sending you your prizes ASAP. Now for the other prize winners, oh, and then this little journaling kit. There's some washi tape a pen loop, bookmarks, stickers, and then this cute little pencil pouch for journaling. 
So you get this whole bag of stuff for your grand prize. Congratulations. Now for the other prize winners, let me put this to the side. You get your choice. I have this whole box of goodies. I have, you can get a little ramkin and it has a little cover. I have it in red, white, and blue. Very festive, very American. There are these cute little ramkins. Or I have the amazing Christy McCammon's 100 day food journal. You could win this also. It has breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then you have thoughts and feelings and then what you're thankful for at the day. So you get 100 days of this. Amazing. And how cute is this? Spiral bound. Or I have these little goodie bags. It has a recipe in here. It has a little journaling kit. It has a little um, chai spice blend and just some other little goodies in here. You can pick that as your prize. Otherwise, I have some O-U-R. I actually said it right. Usually I say it wrong. It's the O-U-R t-shirts. They support and help and save children and then have aftercare for children who are in human trafficking. So sex trafficking, uh, work trafficking, all that stuff. They save these kids and then they have aftercare. So this supports them and they're really nice t-shirts. I have them myself. And I have them in dis different sizes. This is a large and it fits really nice. Then I have a black one, all different sizes. Uh, this is a small and it says, join the fight. They're just really fun. I have this red one. It fits really nice. It fits like a unisex size, so it's really nice. This one I have in a medium. Um, I have this. This one fits like a woman's fit, so it's a little bit smaller. It's a v-neck and it says, shine your light. I have this one too. This is in a small. I had to buy myself some. Uh, and then I have just a couple more of just these in different sizes. Otherwise, you can pick one of any of my single volumes if you would like that as your prize instead, depending, unless you already have all my volumes. So those are the prizes. You get to pick the winners. So you can message me, I'll message you, we'll get in contact with each other. And thank you so, 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 so much for joining in the fun of this Bake Off. And remember, all of you who didn't win but did enter the Bake Off, you can message me for your 20% off coupon code for any of the Facebook shop, which is all of the books. Otherwise, if you want like an ebook, you can just message me and we can figure that out together. You can still get that. And again, this coupon does not expire at all. Cindy, I'll take the shine your light if I could. All right, Cindy, you can take that. Yeah, if you're on here, one of the winners, you can just shout out what prize you would like. Also, Instagram. Uh, so fun. I'm super excited. Oh, Annalise, hello from Norway. Very sweet. Congrats, everyone. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So winners, contact me. I'll contact you. And this was so fun. We are going to have to have a bake-off again because this was quite fun. And it's just so fun doing giveaways and all this stuff. You can find all of my cookbooks and more. I have my Facebook shop, or you can find them on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com. Tammy, could I get your volume one cookbook? Absolutely, Tammy. I had a pen. I'll see the comments and I will send you your book. If I don't already have your address, you can message me your address and I'll send it to you. That is a fabulous prize. That is a prize that I'll keep on giving all the recipes. So fun. You can find my cookbooks and more and this replay and past episodes and all the fun stuff on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com. Follow me on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm on TikTok now, and I post really fun recipes. I have a couple that will be coming out soon. Uh, there is a green ham, uh, green ham unwitch. So it's like a sandwich, but without the bread. Super easy, super delicious. Sherry, love you and your recipes all. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Tammy, thank you so much. How fun. Heather, great sh cooking show. Thank you. Oh, Heather, you're here. Congratulations, Heather. And thank you so much for joining and watching and all your love and support. It is always so fun cooking with you. We'll be back next week, right here, same day, same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Lois, congratulations to everyone. Yes, congratulations, and we will definitely have to have another Bake Off pretty soon. In April, uh, Gail, great show today, thank you. Cindy, thank you again, Natalie, wasn't expecting to win. Yes, Cindy, you did a fabulous job. Um, in April, April 18th, I'm going to be having a live in person. You can come in person to a live cooking show, tea party extravaganza. It is a fun time. This is, we had this last fall and it was just so fun. We're going to do it again. 
Uh, Janice, thank you. I've sent you a message already. Another great day. Noreen, fun. Janet, thank you. Amy, who is speaking today at the Bible study tonight at 6.30. Yes, we have Bible study tonight, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. In my kitchen right here, my mom will be sharing tonight. It will be a fun time. We have the series, Who Are You, for the whole month of April. And, oh, my, it has been life-changing already because when you know your identity, you are strong then. It's kind of like getting your core built, and then everything else is strong. Well, when you know your identity, you're going to be strong in other places. You're going to be strong in the food. You're going to be strong in temptations. You're going to be strong in life. You're going to be able to go through situations and still come out on the other side a winner. So, again, back to April 18th in person in Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Take a road trip. It'd be fun. Get the ladies together. We're going to be in person at my church, Love of God Family Church, in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, 829 North Tower Road. And we're going to have just a fun afternoon together. It's going to be 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah, 2.30. We're going to make a bunch of things. There's going to be tons of giveaways. There's going to be door prizes. Everybody's going to at least go away with something. It's a fun time. Uh, if you do weigh and measure your food, you might want to save a little bit of your things because there will be tastings of things. So you might want to save a little bit of your protein or fruit, but there's no food police there. We will have coffee and tea, and we also will be live streaming from there. I won't be able to chat with the live stream, but we will live stream because we did that last time, and it is just a fun afternoon to be in person with you, to get to meet you, and it's just a fun time. So April 18th, it's coming up. It's not this Sunday, but it's next Sunday. Oh, I'm so excited. It is a wonderful time together, and we will be live and again, I'll be back next week. There won't be a Friday cooking show that week because we'll be doing it the Sunday of. So thank you again for joining me. Thank you everyone who joined in the Bake Off fun and congratulations to the winner. And again, it was incredibly hard to pick the winners because they were all just so amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, you're only one thought away from a good day. You change your thought, you change your day. It is so fun. I love you guys. And I hope to see you at Bible study tonight. It is a fun time. Love you. Thank you for cooking with me. It's always so hard to say goodbye. With joy, Natalie.